Dana White, head of the UFC, is um, hell bent on making sure UFC 249 goes or is, you know, happens. Um, the, obviously, the headline event is Khabib Nam- Namagamedov versus Tony Ferguson, which has been cancelled. I think it's been called off five times now, right? They've set up a date, put it together, and somehow, you know, through injury, uh, with whatever, some things always happen and sort of like stall the fight. So I think he's so desperate to make it work that he's now lashing out at people who are um, duly concerned and sort of like suggesting that it shouldn't be happening because there's other things bigger than UFC at the moment. But um, it's an interesting position to be in because obviously he has full auto- full autonomy 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 on the ufc um you know this partly owned by wme but he's essentially just the figurehead he's the one driving the boat he's the one kind of steering them in the direction they need to go so he calls a shot so if he wants to um, have these fighters fight you know in the middle of doha somewhere right under a dome surrounded by camels he can do that um and the reason why he can do that is because he's been such a He's been such a, I don't know, I've never really been a fan, personally. I think anyone that kind of is the figurehead of a company like that and is so eager to get in front of the camera and be the star and, you know, stand next to the fighters and, you know, just act hard and all that sort of shit. And then on top of that, he doesn't pay them well. Um, He kind of, you know, it has obvious vendettas against some people he doesn't root for. He has personal grudges against people. Doesn't He's not the most professional um, he's obviously improved over the last few years, I think, because he just had to with ESPN coming in. But he's never really struck me as the most um, clear-minded, um, rational person. He's quite emotional. And you don't really want that from your leadership, especially when you're a leader of a company where you employ, you know, savages, right? Absolute, you know, people who can legitimately kill you with their bare hands. You want somebody who's a bit clear-headed, who can think logically and have the long game in mind. You don't want someone kind of flying off the seat of their pants because... You know, you're dealing with volatile people. It's not going to make a good mixture. But he just doesn't care, right? Because of kills, you know, he's in a position where he doesn't necessarily, he's not really going to get fired or anything. So he can kind of get away with it. And if anything, I would say the UFC is probably one of maybe, yeah, I, w- I would say just, you know, out of just pure ignorance of the situation, it's a pretty easy job to match make in the UFC, especially with the level of talent they have on their roster, right? Because he does people make a big point about oh Bellator isn't that, Bellator isn't this. Um, if you're not fighting in the UFC, you're not really fighting anyone, but it's not really their fault, right? Most it's as it's similar to like what's going on with the XFL and the NFL. The NFL is superior to the XFL because they have all the best talent to pick from. All the best talent want to go to the NFL, not the XFL. Until that changes, it's still gonna be, you know, a place for the yesteryear journeymen sort of people to go and make a bit of extra money. Obviously, for the XFL, it doesn't. It's just a good thing because maybe you know your position. But to suggest that somehow Bellator is is bad because you know the leadership doesn't know what they're doing or whatever it may be, or because they're some quote a genius, he's not really. He's just fortunate that the UFC was the one that were able to kind of capitalize on a mix uh, mixed martial arts uh, wave, and they sort of cleverly align themselves against it so you know when you think of mixed martial arts you think of ufc you don't think of any other league just it's the premier kind of place so because of that all the talent goes there so to match maker the ufc is not that difficult right to create superstars also isn't that difficult because you know you only have to you know you only have to follow fighters instagrams to see how interesting and varied and complex their personalities are right if you're clever enough and you have the right team around you you can make them people superstars you can make them the next global icons easily right they've got so many different interests and hobbies that they're into and family dynamics that you can kind of you know um, exploit on camera and you know obviously with their permission it'll work really well so i don't necessarily i think he gets a little bit too much credit really um for the job that he's actually done i don't think anyone could do it and i think especially at this stage with the investment that they got now and how they're trying to legitimize the sport quote unquote they definitely need somebody else to kind of steer the ship um I don't think he's probably the person to take it to the next level, in my opinion, anyway. And I think this story definitely echoes those thoughts, right? So this is from um, MMA Junkie. The headline reads, Dana White rips critics of UFC's approach to coronavirus and he calls them the wimpiest people on earth, right? This is the head of the UFC calling fans who are criticizing his decision to, like, he's essentially doing everything. He's moving, you know, mountains to try and make this fight happen. Um, He already already subjected 
fighters to go into Brazil in front of an empty stadium to go and fight. And if you know anything about UFC you know, or MMA, you know that going to Brazil, part of the allure of it is, you know, the hostile crowd, the fucking energy, the, the homers, right? Like just that that's what makes those fights memorable. So to go there and to, after doing all that training, cutting all that weight and to fight in front of an empty stadium is such a empty climax. And again, it doesn't serve anyone justice obviously for the fighters they want to do it because again they know what doesn't pay them well so they want to make sure that they are able to get something back from what they've done and expended from their training camp and stuff but it's not necessarily a good situation to be in and of course this ticket is only going to benefit the, the two main fighters it's it, it might of course it might trickle down to everyone else but the people that everyone wants to see is the headline you know the headline act no one really cares about everyone else's fighting on the card so it's a little bit I don't know it's a bit self-serving and again this is unprecedented times I understand he's reluctant to like cancel it but it's a one-off thing that's happened right that no one could ever envision it's not like you know Tony Ferguson tripped on a wire somewhere right or could be got stuck in some on you know got stuck in an airport where he can't leave this is a big deal but anyway here's here's his statement here's the kind of story that kind of uh, expounds a little bit on it so um, what's UFC President Dana White up to these days dealing with the bullshit he says these were his words Thursday during an Instagram live interview with UFC World Vote champion Kamara Usman what bullshit White of course was referencing the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and its impact around the world as of Thursday night the global death toll was 9,700 with more than 235,000 confirmed cases in the US the death toll was 157 up to 40 last week um, across 22 states as confirmed cases increased to more than 11,200 Right. Let's have those numbers in mind as we continue reading this. Perhaps the most um, sobering news Thursday came from California Governor Gavin Newsom, who projected that for roughly 56 percent of our population to 25.5 million people will be infected with the virus over the next eight week period. Professional sports around the world, including the NBA and NHL, among others, have um, either cancelled their seasons or prepared to uh, be off for months in collective effort to help stop the spread. So every other league, right, people that leagues that he's trying to aspire two right the leagues that he's trying to aspire the ufc to be like in the future have all cancelled so white however remains convinced the ufc which suspended its next three fights through to april 11th will be able to resume its operations in time for ufc 249 and highly anticipated khabib no and tony ferguson fight scheduled for april 18th but without a location he said, here's this quote, here's the reality. We'll be up and running before any other sport will, which is nuts to say, right? Just as a statement. It's as if this isn't a competition, right? It's not as if like um, we are trying to see who's the hardest, who can sustain the longest, who can bounce back, who's a warrior, who's a fucking beast. It's not that. It's not something, it's not like a, a fitness challenge or a kind of question of your will. <laughs> It's insane. But anyway, so the, um, our sport's different. We have our own arena next door, the UFC Apex. So we will fulfill every fight for every fighter this year and we will get this thing done. Last week, while um, other pro sports leagues halt operations and Bellator postponed its 241 event in Connecticut, the UFC went through with its show in an empty arena in Brazil, which is horrendous. White, White was come under fire for dismissing the threat of corona ever since he said nearly two weeks ago that he doesn't give a shit about it, right? Which is insane to say, but hey, not that he cares about it, what others think. He says, think about this. Go online and look at some people. And this isn't a schnock. This is just a fact. The weakest, wimpiest people on earth cover the biggest, baddest sport on earth, which is nuts to say, right? Because the same wink, the same people he's ripping on are the ones that are making it a global force. They're spreading the message. If you just left it up to the UFC to kind of market it, because you you've seen in late yesteryears, unless it's somebody that is undeniable, somebody has that, you know, that you can't necessarily fuck up, like a Connor or a Jorge Masvidal or... I don't know, a GSP. There's people who are just, you can't fuck up their story. The marketing team in the UFC isn't that great anyway. So they base, they do need these weak, wimpy people that he suggests to um, legitimize the sport in some way, intellectualize it, and also market it properly because they can't do it themselves. So he's sort of like dismissing and criticizing the fans who are the reason why it's where it's at now. It's not because of his kind of clever, ingenious work, right? No one gives a shit about looking for a fight. Right, people give a shit about the interviews that Harry Owani does, or the podcast they appear on, or the stuff they do on Instagram Live, or the games they play. Like, no, it's not stuff that he does at all. Um, 
He says, uh, the, the white said, um, what do you expect them to say? What do you think they're going to say? He says, I have over 350 employees who work for me, right? Multi-billion dollar companies are laying off all their employees right now. We haven't laid off one person at the UFC. And every fight, every fighter that fights for me will fight three times this year. Our schedule will go on. Everybody was going to get paid and we'll figure this one out. We'll be the first sport back. And oh, fuck that shit. Everything will go on. It's like, Jesus, okay. Like again, like the greed in it sometimes with these people. Like how much, like how much money did Dana White get from the sale of uh, UFC to WME or whatever whoever bought them? He got a mad amount of money in it, but it's still not enough. He's still trying to put everyone else's. And again, this wouldn't be a problem if fighters got paid. If fighters got paid what they were owed, if fighters got paid what they deserved for the risk of their putting, right? They're risking their lives. You know, every time they go out there to fight for sometimes titles that don't mean anything interim titles whatever they may be they're fighting against people who might be on or off PADs who are quote unquote pulsing right they're risking their lives fighting in this organization where if the guy doesn't like you he might give you he might purposely kind of sabotage your career and have you fighting an absolute beast after your second win ever in your career it's not you know I mean this wouldn't be a problem if you paid him if you paid him it would be fine but because you don't pay them he's probably got pressure from the managers and from the owners or pressure from the the manager of these fighters from the fighters themselves probably dming him right because you know these guys are supporting their families of, of you know fighting in a cage Ugh. so why did not say whether the ufc will or has the ability to test specifically for coronavirus when the events restart regardless he is confident um in the promotions medical practices he says listen uh the media can talk as much shit as they want he said right they don't they, they don't feed families they don't take care of fucking people they don't have people that count on them they don't have people to support and again it's just i get what he's saying right it's just the way he says it and it? he just sounds like such a cunt that's the thing he just doesn't have no to say because what everything he's saying is true i have a business to run i have people to look after who have families right um i'm not gonna um you know cancel everything just because i'm going to keep my eye out and see and gonna go by what the government says and if they tell me i can't do it then i'll close it but until then i'm gonna always look for another option that's fine especially if you're representing the fighters and the majority of them are saying look we don't mind fighting as long as it's safe that's all right but this idea that you just dismiss people's opinions because they happen to be weak and wimpy is like what and again what's weak and wimpy mean are they weak and wimpy because they're not you know professional ufc fighters okay that's cool but who else is going to be that is they're, just, they're the one percent of the one percent it's insane anyway um the day he continues here they don't feed families they don't know they don't have people counting on them they don't have people to support they're doing the right thing as far as medical testing goes and everything that's all we're doing that's all we're fucking doing actually says that's nothing new we were doing that shit way before the coronavirus we were taking care of people making sure that everybody's healthy and every fighter that's with me on the road is getting much better medical attention than they are at home if they were with me if they're with me you know what i mean no i don't mate he says here um, i told our whole roster um, if you or your loved ones have any type of situation or anything, call me. I'll do everything in my power to make sure you're taken care of. It's like, okay. <sighs> like, again, it's, he's put himself in the position where he's the Lord and Savior. You have to call me. Why isn't there a system in place where they can just get it done without having to call the boss and text him and say, hey, my wife is ill or I need to buy toilet paper? Why have to have, You have to go through him so he can hand it out to them. <sighs> but again, like, this situation is ex is exposing the greed of some people. It's showing that some people are just in it for the money, which is fair enough, but they're also putting other people's lives at risk. And if the fighters are willing to do that, then fair enough, it's an equal exchange, but I just don't see the need for it. Um, it's eventually going to get cancelled anyway. So, Because the thing with this as well is like, Khabib and Tony Ferguson are training. They're cutting weight at the moment, right? They have it in their heads that they're going to fight. So they are depleting their bodies, spending time away from their families, right? Um, getting themselves in a position where they can fight. And then it's definitely going to get cancelled. So they're putting them through this whole mental exercise where they'll end up getting let down for what? 